Um, good morning, sirs and ma'am. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for coming today. I am Trophimus, and today I will be presenting you my final year project on the Peltier Polarity Depository Unit. So today I will be going through on the introduction of my project, the Arduino compatible modules. Next, I will be going through my codes and the uh, mechanical setup. And next, I will be showing you my unit performance and lastly, the conclusion. So for my project, the target audience is the uh, food delivery companies such as the um, Food Panda. So if the consumer will be content if the service of the Food Panda, if the victuals delivered to the consumer is at the highest quality, for example, bubble tea. So the problem statement is due to the rise in demands of online orders, it can be extremely difficult for the uh, delivery drivers to deliver the highest quality victuals from a restaurant located distant away from the customer location. So the objective for my product is to bring down and maintain the temperature inside the storage, like a chiller. So now I'll be going through on the Arduino modules used. Um, firstly, I'll be using the digital humidity and temperature sensor known as the DHT22. And also I'll be using the Wi-Fi module. Uh, next, I'll be using the uh, a display module known as the LCD screen. And lastly, a relay to control my LED filter and the fan. So this is the Arduino circuit I implemented for the three modules I've used. The DHT22, Wi-Fi module, and the LCD module. And this is the Arduino schematic diagram I've created. So moving on to the relay circuit connection, because due to its uh, complex situation I run during the tests, I realized my unit couldn't run smoothly for it crash every five to seven, 10 seconds. This is mainly because of the relay draw a huge amount of current. So each relay uses and utilizes about 0 0.7 ampere. So while my relay took about 0 0.13 ampere, so this caused the um, huge amount of drawback of current by the relays, which lets my system unable to work and function well. So therefore, I decided to come out a voltage regulator to give an additional power source. So this voltage regulator is created using a 7805 voltage regulator IC. Um, then we also have the capacitor to filter all the noise generated by the LCD SDA sig data signal line. So now I'll be showing you the comparison of my when implementing the voltage regulator, I mean on the voltage regulator. As you guys can see from the screen, the one without voltage regulator, the oscilloscope show that there's a drop in voltage. Yep. And the one without and then the one without with the voltage regulator has a constant linear five volt. So is this is the full circuit diagram of my whole entire unit. So my modules have been soldered onto some barrel bots. Yep. So now I'll be going through on the code. So I would like to invite you to scan the QR code if you wish to. And there will be some comment uh, written on each of the um, quotes and will help you aid your better understanding of it. I'll also be going through the code. Uh, so for the first line to line 44, it's all about the uh, include of the libraries and the declaration of the modules and setting up the modules to their own individual ports. The next part will be the void setup, and this is where I set up all of the ports to if, um, whether it's supposed to be the output or input, and also start up the unit to allow the program to run only once. So next we will set the void loop. So this void loop is where the code will be running continuously for the program. Um, as I would like to emphasize on the point of one, line 129 to 134, this is where my unit, using the, con the relay as a control to turn on my Peltier unit as a chillum. And same goes for the Arduino code. Um, also, I would like to emphasize on the point of line 137 to 142, this is where the code allows the unit to run as a warmer. So I'm moving on to the mechanical setup. So this is the storage choice and 3D printing. 
So, so the selection of the storage, um, I researched during my final project about the entropy and heat transfer of an in-flight food cart. So this gave me a greater understanding to choose a good storage for my project. So to choose a storage, I must know how good is the storage is. So first, using a psychrometric calculator um, to input all the collected data of the temperature and humidity and, and key into the respective boxes that you can see on the screen. Uh, with a higher entropy, this will actually indicate uh, there's a higher energy inside the storage unit. And then if there's a higher energy, that will be leading to a higher pressure, which also known lead to the higher temperature while inside the cart itself. So the um, so next selection of the storage unit, I must know the um, heat transfer. So starting off, we will have to know the material used for my storage unit. The first layer, we have the outer shell polyethylene. Second, we have the EPS foam. And the inner shell, we have the polypropylene material. So using the Fourier's law, I can find how the heat transfer. But first, I must know the material thermal conductivity. So the polyethylene had a thermal conductivity of 0 0.4 watts per meter Kelvin. The EPS foam had a thermal conductivity of 0 0.03 watts per meter Kelvin. And polypropylene had a thermal conductivity of 0 0.11 watts per meter Kelvin. At the same time, also must know the um, thickness of each materials. So the polyethylene and polypropylene has the estimation thickness of 3 mm, and the APS foam has the thickness of 20 mm. So I would like to calculate using the, um, the Fourier's law I mentioned earlier. Um, I will find the thermal resistance of the material, which gives me 0 0.7013 km square per watt. And then calculated using the temperature I found, and divide against my um, total of thermal resistance and eventually give you 6.101797 joules. So you guys might be wondering how much is actually a 6.101797 joules. If we will look to a point of view that a cup of coffee take about 1,200,000 to reheat from a room temperature of 50 degrees, this can prove that the storage direction has a very good insulator that only allows 6.101797 joules of heat leaking into it. So now moving on to the 3D processes. Um, so I will use the solid words to actually design my case and uh, design it. And also use the Cura to print out my case. And eventually the Ultimaker to produce my case designs. So this is the 3D case I've been printing out. Uh, firstly, we have the display case. Second, we have the base case. Third, we have the fan case. And last, we have the voltage regulator case. So the Pelter unit has two sides. So when there's a DC electric current passes through it, uh, heat is removed from one side, causing one side to be lower in temperature, while the other surface increases in temperature. So this is the Pelter unit installation. So as you can see, there's a fan being attached to a larger heat sink, and the Pelter unit is placed in the middle, after which we have the heat sink, or known as cooling fin, at the other side, while a small fan attached to the smaller cooling fin. So now I'll be moving on to my unit performance. So this is my Peltel Polarity Depository Unit. And this is a system architecture I created. So how does this system work? It's the DHT22 sensor will sense the temperature and humidity. And it will be displayed on the LCD screen. And it will transfer the data to the thing speed in the cloud using the ESP Wi-Fi module which will give us the live visualization on the cloud and the notification of uh, Twitter if the temperature exceeds the threshold. So this is the storage performance. And you can see the hot side and the cold side of the unit. Okay, now I'll be showing you the live visualization at thing speed.
as you can see the data have been just released a minute ago yeah so i'm um, currently my data is at the end uh, collecting the data is in live right now so i'll be moving back to my presentation So I mentioned uh, about the um, Wi-Fi data. So if there's a stable Wi-Fi, there will definitely a st uh, stable data transfer. And okay, the school Wi-Fi is unable to work due to security reason. Is this a presentation or demo presentation? Right? Is, is this a presentation uh, or demo? Uh, this is an uh, example view, visual. Yeah, it, it I'll be showing you at the other side. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Yeah. So now, uh, so okay. Um, uh, continue the slides, sorry. Okay. So moving on to the uh, data I collected. So the next slide. Okay, next. Next. Yeah, that's browse through, browse through, slide by slide. Next. Front or back? Uh. Next slide. Okay. Uh, so I'm moving on to the conclusion. Uh, so these are the potential audience I have reached out, and I think might have an interest in my product. So will be the firstly we have the medical industry that um, they might eventually to store their medicine inside. Then we also have the hospital like CSGH. They might like to do the um, medication that requires a cooler like the vaccination or through the medical um, blood test tubes. So now moving on to the conclusion also, um, here are some things that I've been doing for the past five months, learning how to use the NI instruments, um, learning thermodynamics, namely heat transfer and entropy, and also innovating and improving ways to collect data. Also I set up a various experiment and tests and finding, solving using the humidifier as a solution. I learned how to use a 3D printer and create cases and also troubleshoot and the hum dehumidifier and learning the mechanics of a Peltier unit to eventually creating my own Peltier polarity depository unit. So the future developments for my project I would like to implement in the future. Firstly will be a temperature control unit so that the um, user is able to change the temperature to its own desire and also I would to add a switch so that the user can change the polarity much more conveniently. Also, I would like to add a battery so that um, it doesn't require a power outlet to actually activate or on the run the program. Also, I would like to change the module of the LCD to the old LED. Oh, uh, yeah, after this. Okay, then now we go for the demonstration. Yeah. So I would like to invite you to the, uh, the others. Uh, okay. 